This is an explanatory video of our paper Fast Covariance Recovery in Incremental Nonlinear Least Square Solvers. Please take a seat and enjoy the animated block matrices and vectors. Let's consider a robot driving in a Manhattan world. We want to estimate its state every step. For that, we incrementally solve a sequence of linear systems. A is the Jacobian matrix of the system. Every step, new measurements are added to A by appending AU. In similar way, the updates are additive in the case of the Hessian matrix lambda. In order to obtain the solution of the system, one needs to factorize the Hessian matrix every step. This results in a triangular matrix R and the solution is calculated by back substitutions. Since we are solving a nonlinear problem, the linearization point changes every step. Most of the time, the changes are not significant. Therefore, we can change the linearization point only when needed. This is shown in the video by changing the color of the matrix R. But in this paper, we are interested in something else, the covariance matrix sigma. Why? Because this quantifies the error in the estimation. If we want to compute sigma, the sparse tricks don't work anymore. Sigma is dense. Fortunately, most of the applications only require a small number of the covariance elements, the block diagonal and possibly also the last column. The elements of the covariance matrix can be calculated recursively from elements of the factor R. The diagonal elements are calculating using the formula 1 and the off-diagonal elements are calculating using the formula 2. We can see that in order to calculate a single element, multiple other elements need to be calculated. Also, that each element requires a set of references. For efficient recovery of multiple elements of the covariance matrix, it is necessary to save all the already calculated references for use in further calculations. So what happens if we want to incrementally update the covariance matrix? When we update the Hessian matrix lambda, the update is additive and only few elements change, the ones corresponding to the variables involved in the update. We will further show how the inverse matrix sigma can be also updated in an additive way. To calculate incremental covariance updates, we can use the Woodbury formula. We begin with the covariance matrix from the previous step and pre and post multiply it by the AU. Observe that only few elements of the full matrix are needed, in particular the ones corresponding to the non-zero elements in AU. The result of this product is a very small dense matrix S, which is symmetric and invertible. For the outer product, we again take advantage of the sparsity pattern and ignore the elements of sigma which don't correspond to the variables involved in the update. This formula can be split into parts which yield a block vector each. Their product equals the increment delta sigma. Also, individual elements of the covariance matrix can be easily calculated. Now we have means to calculate additive updates to the covariance matrix. But is this really possible in online applications where the covariance sometimes are required to be calculated on demand? The answer is yes, and a few more algebraic manipulations will show you how. To calculate the increment delta sigma, we need several but few block columns of the old sigma, the ones corresponding to the update variables. We can actually solve the old system only for those columns. But the problem is that by now, the old system is not available anymore. We already have the new updated system. So what can we do? It will sound counterintuitive, but we can actually calculate the increment delta sigma from the already updated covariance. The same delta sigma can downdate the new covariance matrix to obtain the old sigma. Therefore, the required block columns can be calculating using the updated system, and based on that, we can easily obtain the increment delta sigma. The complexity is the same as in the previous case, and now we can calculate the covariance updates on demand. And now we will see why we went through all this trouble because this incremental strategy proves to be about two orders of magnitude faster than the existing implementations, mainly based on the recursive formula. 
We tested the implementation on several SLAM datasets, comparing the time to recover the block diagonal and the last block column of the covariance matrix every step. We also analyzed the memory requirements, and we can say that the overhead is very small. And what is interesting is that when testing the accuracy of the incremental updates, it shows increased precision over the recursive formula. More details about the results can be found in the paper. Here we have an example of recovering the covariance matrix in an application. In order to reduce the uncertainty of the estimation, the robot needs to perform some associations between the current pose and already visited places. This is called data association and it is a central problem in SLAM. Data association is usually performed through sensor registration or appearance-based methods. While the former is very computational demanding, the latter only applies to vision-based SLAM and sometimes is prone to perceptual aliasing. Another way to check for data association is to calculate a distance between the poses. In this type of tests, it is important to consider the uncertainty of the estimation. This is shown in the video by the green ellipse around the last pose. And it represents that the pose of the robot is normally distributed in that area. Calculating the distance weighted by the marginal covariance gives us a measure of how likely it is to see again what we have seen before. In gray, we show the candidates for data association that passed the distance test, and in blue, the ones that passed the sensor test. We simulated this experiment on Intel dataset, where we removed all the loop closures and allowed only the one passing the tests. All the possible associations were added to the system. The time of marginal covariance and distance calculations is less than 20% of the solving time, allowing for fast and accurate data association tests. 